Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm excited to talk makeup with you today because today we're going to rank my Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes um, in preparation for the release of her new Obsessions pastel palettes. So um, she is about to release three new palettes, a um, like lavender, a mint green, and a pink um, pastel palette in her nine pan obsession format and it is part of the obsession lineup it is my understanding that those will release on march 1st um, now what i don't know yet for certain if it's going to launch at sephora the same day as it launches on her website so that is so far my understanding but i'm not 100 percent certain on that but it's right around the corner so I have quite a few of her Obsessions palettes. In fact, I would dare say I probably have like 98% of them. I have most of them. I very much enjoy these palettes. Overall, I am a huge fan of the Huda Beauty eyeshadow formula, her metallics, her mattes. Just overall, I think her eyeshadow palettes are so amazing. And so I figured that I would rank the Obsessions palettes with you so that you know how I like them, which ones I like more than others, and then that way you're, you and I are both prepared for the release of the new Obsessions Pastel Palette. So let's go ahead and get into this so that you can see how I rank my Obsessions Palette. Okay, so I put a lot of thought into how I wanted to format this ranking because if you are familiar with the Obsessions palettes lineup, you know there are different types. So granted, they all follow the same nine pan format. Um, the inside layout is all the same for each, but she's got different types that she's released. So like I said, she's about to release the pastels. She has done the neons. Um, she's come out with like the neutrals um, or the nudes, I guess I should say she's done the ones based on different gemstones and then she's got her original ones so technically they are in I don't want to say sections but not even different collections they're all part of the same obsessions series but like I said different types different categories let's call it that so the way I'm going to do this today is I am going to do the ranking based on category so we will start off with the category you know starting with the least and moving up to my favorite and then within that category I will also rate the obsessions palettes that are part of that category so I hope that makes sense sounds a little complex but we'll get into it here uh, as we go and uh, we'll have a better understanding of how this is going to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with number four. So there's four categories. So we will start with number four and work our way up. And it is going to be her original Obsessions palettes. Now, um, I feel like there are certain things that get better with time, like people get better with age. And I feel that that can be the same with makeup products as well. Sometimes the originals, um, they're wonderful, but then as they get tweaked and they get better and better, you're like, oh, okay, so who knew I wouldn't like these as much anymore? And on the flip side, something that is great, sometimes, you know, companies bank on that and then the um, the quality gets poorer and poorer. So anyways, that being said, number four is her original Obsessions lineup. So these were, I feel like, quite the novelty when they came out. I loved that there was a different theme for each, and they're so, um, uh, how can I put it? Like, they're so compact and travel friendly. So um, let's go ahead and start with out of the original Obsessions palettes, I do have five. Let's go ahead and start with number five for me. Now, as I've told you in my Natasha Denona ranking video, just because I rank something um, lower on the list does not necessarily mean it's poor in quality or anything like that. If it is, I would point that out to you. Um, but a lot of things I might put lower on the list because the, sto the color story doesn't speak to me as, as well, or I don't reach for it as much, whatever the case may be. We all have things in our collection we like more than others. So number five, this is gonna shock you, it's the Electric Obsessions. I am huge on bright, vivid colors or eyeshadows, and so it honestly even kind of shocked me that I placed this as number five. There's something about the color story to this that just does not pull me. And quite frankly, I don't even remember why I picked it up because I don't think it kind of spoke to me from the start. This is one of those things that the others had already released. And this was one of the ones I, miss, I was missing. So I asked for it for Christmas. This was 
what like three years ago or something anyways it is pretty um there's a couple shades i do love so this neon pink this neon orange those are my two favorites out of the bunch but there's something about the color story that doesn't draw me in i think it's this really deep green i don't know sometimes the deeper shades is kind of a turn off for me and i know that sounds weird because you need deeper shades to deepen up and add dimension to your look this just doesn't do it for me. So um, that being said, also these uh, is it the, these two shades, the blue and the purple, again, not my favorite. I feel like they're a little too similar. Um, and this is just definitely not, it's not my favorite. That being said, the quality is not in any way, shape, or form, as I mentioned. Um, pour, it is amazing. It's right up to the Obsessions um, quality. And you're going to see that here in a second. <laughs> one swipe swatches so definitely amazing quality just like i told you the color story i'm reaching for a wipe um just doesn't really speak to me and that is huge um if you have seen my pat mcgrath divine rose hold on let me reach for paper towel <laughs> divine rose video on why i didn't love that then you know that it really wasn't is mainly the color story it didn't speak to me um there was there were a couple that weren't as vibrant as i would have liked but Primarily it was the color story and so that says a lot. So uh, let's move on. Spent a lot of time on that one. Number four is Smoky Obsessions. This also performs amazing. Um, and in fact, I'm just going to point out to you that every single one of these Obsessions palettes performs wonderfully. Um, some are different than others. Sorry, my lash is like plastered to my eyelid over here because I scratched my eye and now it's bugging the heck out of me. Um, every single one of these Obsessions palettes I would be honest with you if the quality wasn't great on one or two of them, and I have found the quality to be amazing on all of them. So that aside, none of these are ranked the way they are because of quality. I just want to make that clear. Um, so as far as this smoky palette, it's beautiful, and I know why I bought it. I bought it because it had these really metallic rich pops that I could make stand out among the deeper shades, but overall... I'm not a smoky palette type of girl. The smoke, is it smoke show? I can't remember. The ColourPop palette that came out that's mainly smoky shades, I passed on it because I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of use out of it. I've told y'all also before, I'm more of a metallic gold type of eyeshadow girl, not necessarily silver. I will tell you this is a beautiful silver, but I've mentioned to you in other videos as well, ColourPop makes a beautiful silver as well. So if you are in the market for strictly a silver eyeshadow that is very rich, and pigmented go the color pop route. I think it's one of the frozen palettes. It might be the Elsa palette. Anyways, that's why this one for me is a number four, but again, they still perform very beautiful, uh, beautifully. And what I have found about the metallics in these, um, palettes is that they are very, very creamy, very rich to the touch, and I love applying them with my finger. I've told y'all that quite a bit over the years, um, so just those types of metallic shades just perform so much better by using your finger. The opacity is quicker, and you use less product, so that is that one. Let's move on to number three. I am getting eyeshadow crumbles all over this. <laughs> okay, number three is the Coral Obsessions. This is a beautiful palette and I love all things coral eyeshadow. I truly do. But here's the reason this one's number three. And at the time, this other palette I'm going to mention to you had not yet released. But it's beautiful. And truly, when these first came out, the coral was like my top one. I loved this. This color scheme, it's very fresh, very pretty. It's got the different tones of coral, which I love in a coral themed palette, um, which y'all know, Natasha Denona came out with a coral palette and I was like, this seems like everything but. But anyways, so this is a beautiful palette and I do love this one. The only reason it's not higher on the list is because there's a couple others I love even more. So the performance, again, unparalleled and this is a couple of shades. Um, so ultimately, again, there's just a couple I liked even more, but overall, I love this Coral Obsessions palette. However, it's number three. <laughs> and so let's go into number two. Now there's one I don't have from her original lineup. I can't remember which one it is. I, it might be like a super neutral one. I don't remember. So there is one that I don't have from this lineup. And I think it's the only one I don't have overall from her Obsessions line, I think. Okay, number two 
is going to be Gemstone Obsessions. This one was released a little bit later than the original collection, but it does still bear the same kind of packaging, like the black packaging. But this one is beautiful. Now this one doesn't have any mats. And you guys know, if you know me by now, <laughs> that I am so over the moon for those palettes that have no mats that are just standout shades. I have no problem supplementing from another palette because one, I get more use out of it. Two, that gives me more variety of the type of shade that I love the most. So this is really a beauty and I cannot get enough of it. When you want that, just that one pop, that one standout shade, Literally, you just have to reach for this and you're done. And the nice thing, again, because they are so travel friendly, literally it leaves room for a maybe a matte only palette to where you can pair the two together. But super compact, really lightweight, it's cardboard packaging, and this one is absolutely stunning. Um, again, I find that the finger works best for these. They're very, very um, creamy. I will also warn you, they're very, very soft. Typically when I order these palettes through Sephora, they come in broken. We all know the packaging issues we've had, um, but they usually come in broken. So if I can buy them in store, I try, but typically they come into store later on, like significantly later after they've released on the website. So that's three shades there. And oh my gosh, these are so, so pretty. Um, I hope you can see those there. Okay, so very, very rich. Literally the metallics in all of these Obsessions palettes I won't say all, in quite a few of these Obsessions palettes look like liquid on the eye. Just absolutely so metallic. It is the true definition of a metallic eyeshadow, in my opinion. So, oh my goodness, I, I can't get enough. And I really don't, I feel like it's just because there's so many palettes that keep coming out and I am an eyeshadow type of girl. So I don't, in essence, I don't get to use these as much as I would like. Sorry, I'm making a total disaster here with all these shades. So I don't use them as often as I probably should, but gosh, I love them. The first one, the first and top um, of this category is the Mauve Obsessions. I love an eyeshadow palette that has like ready or ready, <laughs> red or mauve type of shades, pinky type of shades, plum shades. They make my eye color pop. They add a very lovely warmth and healthy look to my skin, which sounds crazy, I know, um, but there's something about mauve shades that I truly love, and this palette really did live up to the whole mauve theme. A whole lot of variations. There's more mattes in here than there are those standout shades, but the standout shades really are lovely, and they're the type that, on contrast with these matte colors, really just pop. So again, if you are in the market for a mauve type of palette, then you need to check this one out. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and I, I was going to say, I can't get enough of it, but I don't, again, I don't reach for it as often as I should. So let me, whew, so crumbly <laughs> again, cause they're very, very soft. So that's what those look like right there. Again, one swipe swatch. So that is True pigmentation. And again, you can't fully determine the performance of an eyeshadow with a swatch, but I'm here to tell you that I have tested and tried and just used on a multiple level basis these palettes, and they stand true to the swatches. They're amazing. Let me wipe off my hand before we go into the next section. Be right back. All right, let's move into category number three in my ranking, and that's gonna be the Gemstone Obsessions palettes. These are beautiful. They remind me very much, not in formula, but just in the theme of like a monochromatic palette. They remind me very much of the ColourPop palettes, um, just because it's like, you know, with ColourPop, it's a yellow theme and a blue and a green, and this is along those same lines. The only thing is, these are gemstone themed, so they're a lot richer than you're going to find like in the monochromatic palettes by ColourPop. They are really, really lovely. So let's go ahead and start with, I have four of these, and I can't remember if there's, I think there might be five. I don't remember. I thought I had them all, but I don't know. I'm having like a flashback, and I think I may be missing one. I don't know. There's a reason I didn't buy it. Probably thought I wasn't going to reach for it. But number four from this category for me is Topaz Obsessions. It's beautiful. I love it but it's more neutral and there's others I love more. So it is very, very pretty, very metal rich. Like just, I don't even know how to describe it to you. It just looks like liquid metal, liquid gold. It's stunning. Very, when I say these metallics are rich in pigmentation, 
they are very rich in pigmentation and I love the creaminess because they don't go on your eyelid looking all crepey, wrinkly, and gross. They don't lose a little bit of their metallic finish in translation. These go on just as you see them and this really is a lovely palette, especially if you like warm shades, if you like golds. Like I told you, I love gold shades on the eyelid more than I do silver. So this is right up your alley if you love a good gold slash warm palette. Um, they are absolutely stunning. But again, I'm more of a vibrant type of girl when it comes to eyeshadows. And so while I have used, I have gotten used out of this palette, it's not like I bought it for nothing, um, but it is number four in my ranking. For number three, I love purple palettes, but this one is number three for me, and it is the Amethyst Obsessions. It's the purple-themed but it's beautiful. Um, it, I think it's just so stunning. And I find it to be different enough from the ColourPop one. Like, like I said, there's, they're, they're the same in theme, but different. You know, different when it comes to the color story on the inside. I guess I can't even say that because technically color story, I mean purple and purple. But um, just very, very rich. Like, different finish I just gotta say so anyways very pretty very lovely if you've got like hazel or green eyes these types of shades will make your eye color just pop um, and I like again there's different variations of purple shades in here so you can like create like an ombre effect just really nice but that's what three of those look like and let's get these down very very pretty again just very purple themed, purple tone, lovely. And number three on my list because ooh, the ones I'm gonna show you next are so, so pretty. You're gonna see why I had to bump this to number three. So the next one, number two for me from this category is the Emerald Obsessions palette. This is so, so pretty. And every time I see this palette, it reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. I don't know if it's because the Emerald, um, what is it, the Emerald Palace? Um, Emerald City is where they're going. So every time I see that, it reminds me of The Wizard of Oz. Anyways, this palette is stunning. When I got this palette, I had never had a shade like this before in my collection, and it's one of the ones I'll swatch for you. Lime Crime since came out with their Venus 2, and it has like a lot of variations, um, kind of similar, but this one is similar to a shade that's in that palette. But that was a novelty for me. I had not had a shade like that at all. Um, and again, for someone who loves collecting eyeshadow, you get to where you're like, all right, I've got several variations of this same shade. So it's so nice to have something new and exciting that you can vary it up because you don't have anything like that. So, so pretty. Um, just very, very rich, very, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it to you. Just, I think I'm running out of descriptions. All I can say is it's absolutely lovely. So that one is number two. And now let's go into number one. If you are familiar with this lineup, then you probably have already guessed which one is number one, especially based on last few videos, like for Valentine's Day and stuff, on letting you know, like, you know, that I love reds, and that would make the Ruby Obsessions my number one. It is absolutely beautiful. This just it takes stunning to a new level, you guys. This is just a pop of red. And I love a good red. Yes, sometimes it can make you look sick. I love that look. <laughs> I don't know. It's very, very pretty. And it's got this ruby metallic shade that's absolutely stunning. Blows my mind. So let me give you a couple of swatches on this one. And haven't, I gotta say, I haven't used this one in a little while. So it makes me want to pull it back out. See, that matte did not swatch very well. Um, but again, I have never had any kind of issues with these Obsessions palettes. And they just, they do it for me. So that does it for our category number three. Now it's time to go into category number two. Let me wipe these off and I'll be right back. We'll go into number two. Okay, you guys, I'm excited about the next two categories, and I actually think you're going to be very surprised at how I ranked these last two based on what you know about me. Um, so, number two is going to be the Neon Obsessions palettes, which, yes, I know, very surprising given that I hands down prefer vibrant, even neon shades over neutral. 
I know, very surprising that I didn't rank this number one. We'll get into that in a little bit, but the Neon Obsessions were so exciting to me. I was so happy that she had released these because, or when I originally saw that she was gonna release these, I was like, yes, finally gonna be some great neon shades from someone who knows how to do eyeshadow. So these were definitely one of those launches or one of those releases that got me super excited about makeup. So let's go into number three in my ranking, and that's gonna be the Green Neon Palette. And I forgot how she ranks or how she names these if it's green pink that kind of thing um i do while it's it's come to my mind a couple of times i keep on forgetting to tell y'all all of the obsessions palettes are made in prc so if that's something that's been on your mind if you're curious um they are made in prc again though the quality on these is sensational so that has not been an issue for me i find that they all have a shelf life of 12 months um and i never gave you like the volume in these like how much comes in here but I have since thrown away the boxes I know very surprising um and I can't seem to find um it's oh peel here oh I don't want to do that okay well anyways they are the thing about these nine shan pa nine pan shadow palettes is that they may look like minis they're not the pans of product are full size pans of product and I know that was a huge confusion when she was first releasing these at the start but they are full size pans of product. So the green is third on my list because the quality is good. I know I said that all of them are fantastic. I need to take that back because this one is probably out of all of them one step below. Um, but I think part of that is also because most of these are toppers. Um, and I just was like, what a missed opportunity because there could have been so many amazing neon green shades. Maybe those are difficult to make, I don't know. But this was primarily a topper palette, and if you look at it, majority of them have nothing to do with green or neon green. So anyways, this is number three for a very good reason. Um, and again, out of all of her Obsessions palettes, this is probably the one um, that I like the very least. And it just had so much missed potential. But that's what those look like right there. And you're going to see that they're going to be hard to see. <laughs> And it's primarily because they're toppers. They're very, very sheer and they are lovely as a, you know, topper as a wash of sparkle over another shade. But I typically, I don't do that very often. I don't use toppers very often. So again, quite the missed opportunity for me. I'm like, darn, you know, but oh well, it is what it is. Okay, moving on to number two in my ranking for the Neon Obsession palettes. And that is going to be the pink. The pink and the orange were very difficult to rank as far as which one I wanted to be number one and which one I wanted to be number two because I think there is some similarity um, that it's like, <clears throat> I love them both for different reasons and I do find them to be a little bit similar. Now, the pink definitely, it has what the, I hope, it has what I had hoped the green would have, and that is a good variation of neon pink or pink family type shades. So in here you've got neon pink, you've got even like a neon peach type shade, but then you've got like the neon or like lilac or whatever, and it's just got really, really good variations of neon pink. This one was a color story that I was like, ooh, I gravitate towards that in a heartbeat. So definitely number two on my list. I love that these neons don't really need help in building up because a lot of times for neons you need to add a stark white base to really let them come through and even then it can be a little bit more difficult to build them up because they just don't have that intensity. These are very, very good in their intensity. Yes, having a stark white base does really help, but if you wanted to eliminate that step, you still get some of that neon effect without having to take that step, if you know what I mean. So for the neon lover, this is a wonderful, wonderful palette, and I love it. It speaks to the neon 80s girl in me. So that is the pink one. And then let's move on to number one, and that is going to be the orange. Sorry, I got a makeup wipe, and it is like I've got sparkle and color and everything going on. So well, here we go. <laughs> the orange is number one and this is just my very, very favorite. Um, it has got, again, just like the pink, it's got great variation on 
orange shades. But again, where I say there's some similarity, it's because there's a little bit of like crossover because you've got, you know, another similar kind of fuchsia shade. You've got like a neon pinky coral shade, which there was a similar one in the other palette. And then of course you have, you know, your oranges, your neon oranges, yellow, that kind of thing. One reason I love this palette so much is this orange shade right here. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Now when I told you that the, so I think I made a statement a little while ago that all of these Obsessions palettes have like these super rich metallic shades and then I said, oh wait, not all of them. So these um, neon palettes are really what I was referring to um, because these really aren't truly metallic. They are a, they're like a foiled shade, but they've got sparkle in them. So I would, con I would consider them to be more of like a sparkly type shade. They're still very lovely. Um, but they're very different from those types of, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Gemstone palettes. My goodness, I've been talking for too long. <laughs> so here are what a few of them look like from the orange palette. The mattes in these palettes, it looks patchy, it looks chunky because I've got some pieces on there. It's because they're really, really creamy. And they do not, I will tell you, they do not swatch well at all. They go on beautifully on the eye. They are horrible at swatching. If you were to base your decision just on a swatch, you'd be like, yeah, I'm turned off by that. I'm moving on. So um, they are very lovely. They just don't swatch amazing. Um, but these neon, sh or neon palettes are just absolutely, they just, like I said, they speak to the neon lover in me and they do the job. All right, guys, it's time for number one in the Obsessions palette category for me, what I would rank as my favorite category, which again, I'm going to repeat. I know this is going to surprise y'all because I reach for vibrant shades more than I do neutrals, I know, but the nude palettes, you guys, are just my very favorites. Out of all of the Obsessions palettes, the packaging is killer, the formulation, the just... I don't know guys, there's a lot to go over with these. They're they're absolutely stunning. And like I said, over time these have gotten better and better. Um, and packaging is one just how it appeals to someone like me who, okay, there's a few mattes, but there's also some super standout shades. Anyways, let's go ahead and go with number one. And it might be kind of funny the way I ranked these. You may be like, okay, that's kind of weird. Um, the Nude Rich is number one. The reason I say you may be questioning, you know, that's kind of weird, is because the theme or the intent in releasing a rich, medium, and light palette is because that way it's suited to different skin tones. Somebody with a deep skin tone probably won't benefit from the very lightest palette, and maybe even vice versa. Maybe somebody who is extremely fair would not would not benefit from something that's very, very like rich in pigmentation, very, you know, that would need to go with a super light hand, that kind of thing. So I thought that was pretty brilliant. Now, I'm kind of in between, I'm a light medium skin tone, so I can kind of get away with doing both, which is nice. So the Nude Rich is my absolute favorite because these shades are just that, rich. Truly and honestly, when I open this up, I think of a Hershey's chocolate bar. There's something about it that is so appealing to the eye. It is just so rich. The pigmentation is rich. The color story is rich. It's very deep. It's very inviting. I don't even know how else to describe it to you. I'm just kind of saying what comes to my mind. This is the one that I'm actually wearing today. And there's something about this color scheme, about these rich type of shades that add such a healthy, rich look to my face. I don't know, again with that, <laughs> that. How can eyeshadow make your skin look healthy? Who knows, don't ask me. Just the power of makeup, I guess. This one is absolutely stunning. And I love that my deeper skin tone ladies, just this is like ideal, you know? Um, but again, I love that I benefit from it too and that I can use it too. <laughs> so here are a couple of shades from this one. And again, they don't swatch, the mattes don't swatch as good. Don't be turned off by that. It's just how the formula swatches. And that's why I love that you can't judge an eyeshadow, whether it be a Panna product or a palette, um, by its swatch. You can't judge a book by its cover. You gotta try it on. You gotta go in with it, and who knows, it might be the best thing that's ever happened to you. So that is number 
one for me. I just realized I went backwards. Okay, you guys, I gave it away. <laughs> Number two. So, oh, I'm sad now that I didn't keep it consistent. Oh, well, you guys. All right. So, medium is actually my second favorite. I basically worked backwards um, with how I like them. So, the medium is also beautiful. Again, the, it doesn't give me what the rich one does, but it's also very, very pretty for like a super neutral look. And again, the matte shades are very pigmented. I love these pops, these stand out um, shades. They offer like a foiled slash somewhat metallic finish, but they have like this sparkle and it's not the fallout glitter that gets all over your face. This is a glitter or sparkle that is built into the creaminess of the formula. And that way it literally goes on and it is there to stay. I don't use any kind of glitter glue with these. So again, very, very beautiful appealing shades and easy to use, especially if you're wanting like a super easy everyday look, if you're wanting something to complement, again, your skin tone, then these are for you. So right there, again, I will repeat, the mattes don't swatch very well, but that is not to say that the quality is subpar. So that's what those look like. And based on process of elimination, you already know what is number three or which one is last on my list. Gosh, I always do that. I keep the I keep the shadow on the back of my hand and then I end up kind of like wiping my hands and I get it all over the place again. <laughs> so again, process of elimination tells you that the light is my least favorite. I am a light medium skin tone and I will even tell you, so first off, the packaging on these, I think I touched on it, but I didn't, you gotta see how beautiful. It's like a snake skin kind of print and it's like a faux leather. It's absolutely stunning. The light one, <sighs> is almost a little too light for me, and that's why it's number three. It's beautiful, performs just as lovely, but it's a little light for me, so it's the one I end up using the least, but on a fair skin tone, I could see this being so, so lovely. So, like, this pink right here is a very, very light hint of pink on me. This one literally just sets my eyelid. And then this one right here is just a, it can be a transition, but it is very, very peachy light. So, they're very pretty, again, um, beautiful for the skin tone that really would cause it to, you know, pop. Or in going in with the most natural look, like for someone with my skin tone, this would be lovely as well. But it's for that reason that it's just not my favorite. But that's what those look like right there. So we have gone through all 15 of my Huda Obsessions palettes and I'm excited to get my hands on those pastel palettes because I wanna see, it look like they've got some of the marble swirling that she has placed in her larger palettes. Um, specifically the, which one was it? The one before retrograde, it's not desert something, gosh, I can't even remember, anyways. Her next to last palette of the largers, she's got these marble shades that are absolutely stunning. And based on the promo picture, it looks like these are gonna have those types as well. So I am so super excited to get my hands on these, play with them and add them to my obsessions collection. Okay, my friends, thank you so much for stopping by to watch. If you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you around here on this channel again. I hope it's not the first and last time that we get to talk about makeup. If you are a regular, thank you so much for stopping back. Bye. I truly appreciate your support. Uh, support more than words can say. I say that so often, but I feel like I can't say it enough. It's truly meant um, from the heart. And before I let you go, you guys know I want to give you a very quick verse of the day just in an effort to motivate and encourage you um, and to add some joy to your day. Today's comes from 2 Samuel 22 4, and it says, I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. All right, guys, thank you again for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.